The UN is hosting a climate change conference in Scotland in two weeks, where Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett will attend. The UN is also hosting a Middle East Climate Week. Our correspondent, Mike Wagenheim, spoke with Ambassador Gidon Bachar, who is Israel's special envoy for climate change. Ambassador Gidon Bachar, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Special Envoy for Climate Change and Sustainability. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. You know, Ambassador, when I was talking to Ambassador Gilad Erdan a few weeks ago during the Abraham Accord celebrations, I asked him, what's the next big thing for regional cooperation in terms of the Middle East to build upon the Abraham Accords? There's been tourism and trade and even medicine. What's next? He looked at me, he said, it's climate change, it's sustainability, which is why I felt, thought it was so important to talk to you with so many important conferences coming up. What can the Middle East do as a cohesive unit to fight what we're seeing right now in terms of the dangers of climate change? Well, Ambassador Erdano is uh, completely right. I think that uh, climate change is and should be uh, indeed the cornerstone of uh, regional cooperation in the Middle East and the Eastern uh, Mediterranean. You know that, the, uh, that our region is considered to be a climate hotspot. It means that the, the, it is warming up one and a half times uh, quicker than the world average. And in some parts of it, uh, temperatures have risen even higher than uh, in, in extremely uh, higher than in other parts of the world, like in the uh, Gulf region, it's already uh, two degrees more than uh, 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 what was uh, before the Industrial uh, Revolution. So things are taking a turn to the worse in the Middle East in terms of climate uh, change. But climate change can be also an opportunity, an opportunity for uh, regional cooperation, an opportunity for uh, prosperity, an opportunity to, to have... Uh, to create more uh, ties with uh, uh, different neighbors here in, uh, in the region. So we have to look at uh, climate change in the Middle East in, in both ways, one as a threat, but also as a source of uh, opportunities. The, the Middle East is heavy on technology, especially when it comes to agriculture, when it comes to environment. What type of collaborations are we looking on uh, between Israel and its, uh, its newfound partners in the region in terms of, uh, you know, battling this front. We are talking about uh, five uh, different areas of uh, cooperation. Uh, one is water. Second is agriculture. Third is renewable energies. Fourth is uh, reforestation or nature-based solutions. And the fifth one is uh, food security and alternative proteins. These are the major uh, acute, uh, acute areas where we need cooperation in the Middle East because the Middle East suffers from water scarcity, which is the highest in the world. The Middle East imports most of its uh, food from outside and it makes, him, makes it very vulnerable uh, to, uh, to, to supply chain uh, problems and hazards. Uh, the Middle East needs uh, more irrigation, for instance, or uh, agricultural-based uh, irrigation. And the Middle East, of course, needs uh, to preserve its, uh, its nature or its uh, ecosystems and uh, to move even into a, a phase of restoration of uh, ecosystems uh, in the region, either if it's uh, wetlands or forests or uh, grasslands. So all of these five areas uh, give us a solid basis for regional cooperation. And we think that for this regional cooperation to succeed, we need also a, a participation uh, from a, a external a, a partners like the United States or, a, or India or Japan or, a, the, of course, the European Union and the United Nations. We believe that, not, there is, that there is not even one single country in the region that can withstand the effects of climate change alone. That's why it makes it, uh, it, makes it absolutely necessary to cooperate and to collaborate in, in, this, uh, in this field. You know that adaptation and resilience building is done 
basically today uh, on two levels in the world. You have a national level. Each country, uh, according to the Paris Accord, has to uh, uh, to make its own uh, adaptation plan, to devise a resilience plan. And there is the international uh, cooperation on climate change, which is manifested through the Paris Agreement and the uh, UNFCCC. But another level of, uh, of cooperation and of resilience building should be the regional one. And this is where we are starting. And I want to tell you that I was uh, just recently in Cyprus, so the second um, regional uh, meeting uh, on climate change in the Middle East, and the aim of the Cypriot initiative is indeed to create a, a regional uh, climate action for the Eastern Mediterranean and, and the, the Middle East. And we in Israel, we think that this is an extremely important uh, initiative. We support it. And we uh, full-heartedly uh, believe that uh, regional cooperation is essential for uh, our well-being and our, uh, our uh, future. There are so many competing interests when it comes to this region, but we are seeing countries like the United Arab Emirates, for instance, uh, putting an emphasis on food security, putting an emphasis on renewable energies. Are there other countries specifically uh, that have kind of changed the way they do business over the last you know, five years or so that are really adapting to, to the model that's going to be needed? Or are you having to kind of pull teeth in this regard? The emphasis should be also put uh, on a truly regional cooperation because we cannot afford uh, a living uh, uh, populations or countries uh, behind. Uh, uh, building resilience in the Middle East should be uh, inclusive. If we leave uh, uh, people behind us, populations behind us, which are not uh, resilient or do not have, uh, do not, did not take measures to adapt to climate change, it will affect all of us. It will affect the stability of the region. We have seen, for instance, how uh, the civil war in Syria, already 11 years, uh, started uh, partially, at least, because of uh, climate change and severe uh, drought that hit the country four years uh, uh, in the years uh, before uh, the, the war uh, broke out. So uh, uh, climate change is seen as threats multiplier in our region. And uh, in order to minimize threats and to increase uh, the opportunities, because also climate change is a manifestation of uh, opportunities, and we must seize these uh, opportunities. Uh, we have to move uh, with a regional plan uh, that will include uh, everyone in the region, practically. Kirin Racha, the Special Envoy for Climate Change and Sustainability from the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thank you so much for taking the time and uh, giving us your insight on this critical subject that's uh, really capturing global attention, especially around the time of this uh, climate conference in Scotland. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. And let's hope ourselves a very successful uh, COP26. It's crucial.